Sure, there are people who are, uh, as I said, problematic, but would you like to have more of them? Would you like to engender yeah. bad behavior? Commercial cinema is is the big is the biggest kind of mass uh, communication you could have and uh, needs i think to uh, to kind of have that social filter on it having said that we all put on that hat when we are writing and we self censor and we're thinking who could stand up and object to what because that happens hi kiran welcome to the coin and thank you so much for talking to me thank you swati uh, there is a lot of talk of patriarchy when you look around you you know what are some of the things that you think even in a urban city women are facing every day when it comes to patriarchy that could probably change i don't think uh, being rural or urban necessarily yeah. changes the experience of women or the safety of women in their workplace or participation of women in in the workforce um i think it it basically comes down to uh society and the way families uh, and communities respond to women but in many uh, kinds of communities there women are just not permitted uh the choice and uh, choice either to study further or to have a have a you know go out and earn a livelihood or not be married if they don't want to or not have children if they don't want to etc i think even in uh, many many urban scenarios on the outside it feels like things are very different but when it comes down to the family unit there are pressures on a woman that that i think the majority of women face uh, especially when it comes to performing defined roles within a household interestingly when you go across urban india uh, especially in a metropolis like mumbai you'll find a lot more working women uh, who are who are actually keeping their families going and other uh, other primary breadwinner or for their families but they're still expected to do everything else as well they are expected to uh, raise their children to look after the home to look after the husband it's a bit of a conundrum i mean uh, uh, either women are expected to do everything or they are not allowed to do what they really want to do and uh, i do think that it ex extends to the most so called educated liberal families yeah. where the pressures are quite different to be a certain kind of person and marry a, into a certain kind of family and and you know have the requisite number of male children you know these are pressures that women i think face a you know rural urban alike i think you said something very interesting was choice i think having the choice in itself is a big privilege today mm -hmm. i mean that's how i view it you know Absolutely. every time I, especially when i watch lapata ladies and she says about you know the What education you know uh, i kept thinking the fact that we have a choice we are privileged enough exactly and that most women don't have it that actually is one of the critical things uh that you know we wanted to build into story was you know women actually work within a certain parameter that's that's assigned to them a daira that is put around their their potential and that daira is often not not uh, very very stated yeah. it's conditioning also that comes for right. generations that oh you can't really do these things i shouldn't it's not okay to do various things and you feel you're making a choice but actually that uh, that choice has been made for you through conditioning i mean the idea is really every human not just women but i'm sure lots of men have to do things which they don't like to do and are not their choice and i think every human deserves that as society we must enable that i think it's very interesting that you said that it's just not women who are conditioned also men mm -hmm. and i don't think we speak about it enough indeed absolutely yeah. very large part of the problem is that we don't deal with what men are going through yeah. you know kamla bhaseen who was was on our show uh, in satyamev jayate actually asked amir this question she's like what is the opposite of patriarchy mm -hmm. and amir said matriarchy mm -hmm. so she said no no it's equality you know really we can't it's not about the binary it's not like oh now it patriarchy has been you know sort of uh, the norm and now we have to make it into matriarchy but uh, it's honestly about equality and i i we can't arrive at that if we don't understand what the pressures on men are and what young boys are being conditioned to uh, feel and think and uh, act like we need to encourage that sort of uh, more equal uh, sharing between the genders so that men feel like they uh, like it's safe for them to not be the the typical masculine man that uh, that society expects that they will not cry they will earn they will be the providers they will take every stress they will be you know it's it's not uh, i'm sure easy for men either you know usually when you see films about feminism 
and patriarchy, they're very loud, right? People are screaming on top of their lungs, there are slogans and everyone's like this aggressively out there. But you didn't do that. You just, you just got these simple dialogues and said, let her do the work. Was that also like a conscious decision for you? Very much so. In fact, that was what I changed broadly from what uh, Biplab had written as a story was that I felt like um, uh, being in the space of humor and satire would just appeal firstly to Indians because we understand satire, I think, like nobody can yeah. because we live in a country full of, you know, dichotomies and um, uh, sort of interesting uh, situations. And I thought that was the right vehicle to tell this story. Also, these are concerns that everybody kind of agrees on. It's not what I'm talking about is not at all new in some not ways. All, yeah. uh, I don't think any of it actually is objectionable. Having said that, we all put on that hat when we are writing and we self-censor and we're thinking who could stand up and object to what yes. because that happens. Um, and so we very uh, sort of like uh, cleverly, I, I say for myself, uh, we decided to put it in a fictitious state. It was a way also to universalize the conversation mm -hmm. rather than, you know, place it uh, uh, yeah. geographically somewhere specific. Yeah. We made it a universal story. If I, we could talk about casting, what a fabulous cast uh, and I absolutely love the fact that you didn't choose to go with known faces where we're in the world where people are still looking for star power you know but and I love the fact so why was that decision taken? Actually Amir was so on board with that decision yeah. because I when I read it I was like you know it's set 20 years ago in a village and honestly the people have to fit yeah. that world it has to look real it has to you know be these faces have to be really distinctive and, uh, and and entertaining as well. Like, you know, you should see the face and remember the face, memorable. So I said, you know, I really don't think we should go with known faces because they set up expectations in a particular direction, Absolutely. right? The fact that we had com a completely fresh cast took away that uh, uh, in, in some way left us free to play with your expectations uh, from characters. You know, when we look at our industry, right? We see films that are extremely progressive. I would like to say Lapata Ladies is one of them, you know. Do you have something to say to films that are regressive and how it might have an effect, a negative effect on the society? I do think it would be, you, if you are going to speak to millions of people, it would be nice if you put on a yeah. filter of how would you like to see society take this right. piece of work? Right. How? What is the change that you would like to see in society? Sure, there are people who are uh, as I said, problematic, but would you like to have more of them? Would you like to engender yeah. bad behavior? Commercial cinema is, is, the big, is the biggest kind of mass uh, communication you could have and uh, needs, I think, to, uh, to kind of have that social filter on it. And uh, the impact that we have on each other is really all that we, we can control, really. Yeah. If there's one thing I'm hoping to do with Lapata Ladies, if people ask, you know, what kind of what do you want to leave people with? I feel like I want people to leave with a sense of goodness, a sense of empathy for each other, a sense of kindness for each other. You know, hope, optimism, yes. But just being good. Sometimes we can't change everything. We cannot change the world. But we can certainly change how we treat each other. Before I go, it's my last question. Um, the film is, of course, called Lapata Ladies. You know, as I say that and I use the word Lapata, mm. We've all been lost in our lives at some point, right? <laughs> is it a memory that kind of comes to your mind when I say the word Lapata ladies? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely question. I feel like I myself was kind of lost for a longish time after Dhobi Ghat because I, uh, I had all these projects that I was very interested in and I was writing and I was working on them and I really did feel that I was uh, in some way in, in a wilderness and I wasn't able to find my way. I felt it most when I was writing and I knew that what I was writing I was very close to but I just felt that the destination was not mm. fully in place. That's the kind of, you know, I feel like what the film also says is being lost is an opportunity and it's really uh, a, a, ch a chance, uh, it's a chance that you must take. It's an adventure that you should embark on if you can. And I, honestly, when this film came along, which was a really a chance that came my way, yeah. it was a very different destination than uh, what I was aiming for with my writing. Right. So it was a little bit of like, you know, uh, being lost led me 
to something yeah. you know uh, quite fulfilling and quite uh, d it was a discovery for me that i could make a film like this which uh, honestly after seeing dhobi ghat nobody would really expect i feel so much more me after making it so i did find myself after yeah. lapata ladies thank you so much for talking to me and uh, yours hoping you have a few chances to get lost only to find yourself again thank you thank Swati. you so much for talking to me really enjoyed this me too